I'm Leah Mice. This video is about a CHI 2022 paper on research I conducted with Andrew McPherson at Queen Mary University of London. The paper is called <laughs> Super Size Me, Interface Size, Identity and Embodiment in Digital Musical Instrument Design. If you would like more details about the research, you can find it in the paper. <laughs> Digital interfaces are shrinking. This trend is driven by pressures of mass production and consumer culture and often accompanied by discourse of control, precision, or convenience. But human bodies remain the same size. We're interested in the impact of interface size on the co-construction of humans and technology. This idea that humans and technologies are ontologically inseparable forms the basis of entanglement theories of HCI. As Frauenberger says, the extent to which digital technologies shape who we are means that whoever shapes technology puts the chisel on humanity. And as Homewood puts it, when we design for or with bodies, we actually design bodies themselves. These ideas challenge the independent existence of a body and an interface, arguing that the body is always more than human. They decenter the human and recognize the agency of objects and also of political and socio-cultural systems. So our research explores how changing the size of an interface has implications on the formation of user identities. To research this, we designed an oversized digital musical instrument and invited musicians to use the instrument to create original performances. We found that the large size of the instrument influenced the performances and also the musician's self-perception. This research shines new light on the ways in which designing technology is designing humans and in turn culture. The study instrument is 2 meters tall and 2 meters wide with 20 performable pendulums. Striking the instrument creates a staccato. Tilting a pendulum creates a drone. The timbre of the drone changes in correspondence to the tilt of the pendulum. Tilting a pendulum above 45 degrees produces an unstable system where the drone becomes chaotic and distorted. An open call for musicians was circulated on social media, and regardless of their musical backgrounds, all musicians that responded were accepted. Each musician completed three sessions where they had private access to the instrument for one hour. Half the musicians received layout A, in which the lower register tones are located on the lower tier, and the higher register tones are located on the upper tier. And half the musicians received layout B, in which the lower register tones are located on the left side of the instrument, and the higher register tones are located on the right side of the instrument. They were instructed to complete several compositions in response to various creative prompts. The final prompt was to create a three minute performance that was broadcast on an online concert. Each session concluded with a semi-structured interview which was transcribed and analyzed using thematic analysis. Of the 10 musicians in the study, three were women, four were men, and three were gender fluid. Their ages ranged from 25 to 54. Their heights ranged from 157 centimeters to 186 centimeters. And while they all identified as able-bodied, seven disclosed conditions that may impact performance of the instrument, such as injuries, anxiety, dyspraxia, and hyperventilation syndrome. All the musicians completed all sessions and created a three minute composition for the concert. Here are some examples of the performances. percent of all compositions created during the study featured only tones within the width of five pendulums. 88% of all compositions in the study featured tones located in both the upper and lower tiers, but only 27% of tones in the compositions were located on the upper tier. This is interesting because on layout A, 
the upper and lower tiers are different registers, whereas on layout B, they're adjacent tones. This trend emerged in all musicians regardless of which instrument tonal layout they were assigned. This indicates that the extra physical effort required to raise the arms to perform the pendulums located on the upper tier resulted in participants performing fewer tones located in the upper tier. To understand how the study instrument might form part of a more than human entanglement, it's perhaps more productive to consider the instruments that each participant usually plays. For example, a cello player said that the music he composed for the study instrument was inspired by the way he plays the cello. And a synth player said her concert performance was similar to the compositions she's made with synthesizers. We might say that the participants and the study instrument are entangled into a more than human assemblage, but we found it more interesting to focus on what has been removed from such an entanglement, the cello or the synthesizer. After many years of performing with a particular instrument, removing it leaves a particularly shaped hole in a performer's more than human body. Our study instrument partially fills that hole, as seen by repertoire that bore the resemblance of the participants primary instruments and musical styles. When examining the performances, we found examples of how embodied interaction created the codependency between the instrument and the performance. The size of the instrument and the effort required to perform it resulted in specific performative and compositional choices. Performers largely narrowed their performances to tones that are located in front of their bodies, prioritizing tones that were comfortable to reach over melodic or harmonic considerations. The compositions are mostly performed by a musician standing still, with musical pauses to accommodate the musician relocating their body to another part of the instrument. We found it interesting that only one participant suggested rearranging the tones of the instrument or lowering the height of the instrument to better suit his body, whereas three participants made comments about changing their bodies to better suit the instrument size. In commercial practice, the economic reasons for favouring small interfaces are obvious, but we argue that HCI research doesn't need to adopt a fixation with miniaturised technologies. There's a whole constellation of entanglements to explore. Our results highlight the complex entanglement of bodies, instruments, social and cultural contexts, which are present in musical performance. And we show how exploring musical performance with an oversized instrument can perturb this entanglement in sometimes idiosyncratic ways. In an era when companies miniaturize synthesizers and drum machines to cater for the bedroom electronic music producer, there are no digital musical instruments on the market that are as large as the instrument used as a probe in this study. By highlighting the distinctive patterns of interaction at large dimensions, this research provides a critical perspective on existing music technologies and a resource for understanding the design trade-offs in other areas of experience-oriented HCI. Thanks for watching.